everyone, it's T and welcome back to my channel. It's been a little bit since we did a movie analysis and I thought what better one to do than The Joker. The Joker's been a pretty polarizing film. People either love it or hate it. No really in between and there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the movie so I thought why not? Let's just jump right in. So The Joker is probably one of the most prolific villains in and outside of comic history. We don't really have any clear kind of origin story for him. Like in the comics, like in Killing Joke, he just kind of had a bad day and that kind of catalyzed his character into being like this criminal mastermind. In other versions, he's always just kind of been criminally insane. In other other versions, there was like a chemical accident with him and, you know, it just drove him fucking insane. So for this version of the Joker, AKA Arthur Fleck, we get a more realistic, sympathetic view of him. A lot of people have been complaining about that, saying, well, why are you making Joker a sympathetic villain? You're kind of giving inspiration and fodder to people who may be loners or potential mass shooters or incels. And you're kind of ammoing them with this sympathetic figure to look up to and help spark any kind of negative action from that. And I don't agree. There hasn't been any sort of evidence conclusively that violent media like movies, video games, or what have you will cause mass shootings or other violent acts. I will link some of that below, but there's no conclusive evidence for this. And to say that video games or a movie or any kind of violent media like that is the exact cause of violent acts is pretty irresponsible. Now, there have been studies, I believe, that in conjuncture with other issues going on like mental health issues, abuse, domestic violence, dysfunctional fami families, drug use, and sort of other external factors like that, these can all come together and create that perfect storm. But media itself is not responsible. As people, it's very important that we can sympathize. We're always looking for justification, a why. And when we look at Arthur Fleck as a character, we do see the why. And we don't have to agree with the violent acts that he does in the movie, but it's important that we at least learn to sympathize and empathize with the situation and the person and separate it from the violent act. So let's take a look at Arthur himself and then we'll kind of maybe give like a like some real world example. So in the movie we see Arthur comes from a very low income household. He's taking care of his mother who seems to have her own health issues. He's mentally ill. He does not get a lot of assistance and aid from social services. In fact, social services cuts his therapy sessions with a social worker as well as his medication. He's got a condition that people don't understand. He has a tick where he just laughs uncontrollably even though the situation doesn't allow for laughter. Sometimes he'll just burst out into laughter for no reason. He's got a shitty job. People at his job make fun of him. People out in the street make fun of him. It's kind of like a perfect shitstorm, really. Almost all of the violent acts that we see Joker commit are justified. For example, when he shoots those three guys on the train, it's in self-defense. They're beating him up. They're hurting him. They would probably kill him if he didn't respond by shooting them. With his mother, that's kind of a gray area. Me and uh, my boyfriend discussed this kind of heavily after the movie, if it was justified or not. But we have a situation, well, two situations actually, two scenarios in which could be the truth, and it probably falls into a gray area. So, Later in the movie, it's revealed that Arthur's mother had adopted him and she let people abuse him. And that's how he developed that tick, that laugh due to all the, all the trauma and head injury of being abused. 
after reading a letter that Arthur's mother was sending to Thomas Wayne, there's an accusation there that Thomas Wayne is his real father and that he's just kind of refusing to acknowledge him. So we come to this revelation of the abuse after Arthur confronts Thomas Wayne about it and he's like, well, your mother's fucking crazy. She was in Arkham Asylum and she adopted you. What probably happened is an area in gray. I mean, Thomas Wayne may very well have been Arthur's father and it was a cover-up and she eventually did let him get abused is what I'm thinking because it wouldn't be any surprise that a rich person would be able to doctor evidence or whatever or have someone committed. That's not too big of a reach I think. In response to this he suffocates his mom. Justifiable or not I mean that's kind of a gray area for me. I don't think it was necessary to kill her, but he did. And then of course, you know, we get that scene in the studio where he is on on Murray Franklin's show. We get, you know, the scene where he shoots Murray and people say that was justified as well because Murray essentially brought him on the show to make fun of him, to kind of mock and ridicule him after his failed comedy scent went the equivalent of viral for those days, which was being on TV. So we have this perfect storm here of justifications and situations that essentially pushed Joker to do the things that he did. Now, were those things right? Were those things wrong? From a moral standpoint, murder is wrong. However, there are justifiable murders and things like that. Like, at least for the kids on the train, I feel that that's justifiable murder because if he didn't shoot him, only God knows what would have happened. So I feel like that would be considered a justifiable murder and everything else is kind of a gray. But what I'm getting at is that I don't see a problem with making him a sympathetic villain because there are people who are in similar circumstances and not to say that they would act violently or lash out at society or anything like that or people who they feel have wronged them. But if we sympathize and just empathize with people in general, we create a kinder society, a more accepting society, and then hopefully with that kinder, more accepting society, we are working towards avoiding people getting to the point to where they feel that there's no way out, there's nothing else we can do, there's there's nowhere else for me to go, no other option but this. And by creating a sympathetic villain in the Joker, which I feel like a lot of people can relate to him because of his lower income status, him being mentally ill, abuse, these are things that a lot of people can relate to and I feel like having that sympathetic figure to build a discussion around is important of how we can go forward to help annihilate some of these problems that we see with society so we can ultimately avoid situations like what happened with the Joker, like what happened with several other mass shooters. The more sympathetic and empathetic we are to each other, the more kinder, gentler society we have that won't allow or helps decrease people from thinking that this is the only way that I'm going to solve my problems or get people to pay attention to me. So let's jump into some other controversies. We have one from around September 23rd when five family members and friends of the 12 people killed during the Aurora shooting sent letters to Warner Brothers reminding them of the tragic event perpetuated by a socially isolated individual who felt wronged by society has changed the course of our lives. They also added that when we learned that Warner Brothers was releasing, was releasing a movie called Joker that presented the character as a protagonist with a sympathetic origin story, it gave us pause. That letter also urged the studio to withhold campaign contributions to people who accepted money from the NRA and things of that nature to help with gun reform, etc, etc. So I did basically touch on this. I don't think having a sympathetic villain is the problem. It's having a less sympathetic and empathetic society, 
Like we're always looking for justifications and the why things like this happen. But when we do kind of see that side as to why people did the things that they did or get their justifications from it, we're kind of like, oh, well, that's stupid. That's crazy. And we're kind of dismissive of it and a bit mean spirited instead of going, okay, well, let's work on being kinder, being more accepting not because we're afraid of these individuals, but because we should be kind and accepting to everybody. You don't be an asshole, basically, you know? The Joker touched on this as well, the movie. It touched on how society is just mean. We're all just kind of fucking mean to each other, to be honest. Like, no one is really looking out for the welfare of other people. We're all wrapped up in ourselves, what we want, what we're feeling and we don't take the time out to think about other people to just be kind and encouraging to other people a lot of people are just assholes you know just log on to the internet and you'll see someone being an asshole about something and that's kind of adding to the problem no one's really being nice or caring or looking out for each other and that's a lot of what's causing the issue and so I feel like as I mentioned before having a sympathetic villain is good because we have kind of a window so to speak into someone who may be like Arthur Fleck and we can try to reach out make adjustments things like that so while I do understand why the families from the shooting wrote that letter I think having a sympathetic villain is good in decreasing incidents like this as opposed to increasing them. And this was also kind of the message that Warner Brothers did send out on the 24th after they received the letter and it became public. Of course they didn't put it in the theater chain Cinemark and they also didn't scream it at Century Aurora where the shooting had occurred or the Century XD. So they kind of limited the movie there, just in case, I mean, I don't necessarily agree with that, but I think it was a good gesture, a good precaution, so people wouldn't feel on edge since the last shooting occurred during a Batman-related movie. So I, I understand why they did that. The studio also reportedly donated $2 million to victims and survivors of the Aurora shooting massacre in 2012. And... They responded with a statement, the highlight of it being, gun violence in our society is a critical issue and we extend our deepest sympathy to all victims and families impacted by these tragedies. At the same time, Warner Brothers believes that one of the functions of storytelling is to provoke difficult conversations around difficult issues. Make no mistake, neither the fictional character Joker nor the film is an endorsement of real world violence of any kind. It is not the intention of the film, the filmmakers, or the story or the studio to hold this character up as a hero. And I would agree with that. Joker was not portrayed as being a hero nor a villain. Like I said, you could justify and understand some of his acts, but at the same time, they also were wrong. So he was neither portrayed as a bad person nor a good person. He was just portrayed as a human and I really appreciated that. There's also been a little controversy surrounding Todd Phillips who helped produce and direct the film. He's the director of Joker and he's come under fire for some comments that he made with Vanity Fair about the state of comedy. What he said specifically in that interview was, go try to be funny nowadays with this woke culture. There were articles written about why comedies don't work anymore. I'll tell you why. Because all the fucking funny guys are like, fuck this shit because I don't want to offend you. It's hard to argue with 30 million people on Twitter. You just can't do it, right? So you just go, I'm out. So in the interview, as you can see, he was basically explaining to Vanity Fair why he wasn't making comedies anymore. Some of the comedies that he directed were the Hangover series 1 through 3, Due Date, School for Scoundrels, Road Trip, and Old School. He also produced other things like A Star is Born, Project X, 
and things of that nature. So a lot of like raunchy, gross out comedy kind of things. And that's not to say that those types of comedies don't work anymore, even though I know that they're kind of problematic in nature still. I still enjoy the first Hangover road trip. It's still kind of funny. Old school, I still like. And the thing of it is, like, there's always going to be a demand for that humor because there's always going to be, you know, edgy teenagers and people that have that kind of raunchy, gross out comedy approach. Like, they like that kind of stuff. So it's not like that audience isn't there, but at the same time, there are other audiences that don't really like that thing anymore. Like, people do grow out of that humor. And it's got nothing to do with like cancel culture or woke culture. That kind of humor is just seen as immature by a lot of people once they reach a certain age. And, you know, it's kind of like, at least to me, it feels like some of the jokes in some of those movies are kind of like punching down. Like in Road Trip, like it's kind of like made as a joke that the skinny white guy is having sex with this, you know, bigger black woman. And it was kind of funny, like, haha, she's fat, you're thin. <laughs> oh, you're white bread and she's ghetto fabulous. <laughs> That's not too funny now. And it's not like in The Hangover, you know, paging Dr. Faggot. It's not like that was a groundbreaking joke. I feel like with a lot of comedians, it's just old man yelling at cloud. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, oh, I can't joke the way I want to because audiences have changed and I don't feel like adapting my comedy. People still like that raunchy humor and if you want to do it and if you really believe in your whatever you're saying, just like stand by it, like double down. Dave Chappelle has doubled down because he thinks he's right. That's another story in and of itself. And there are some parts of me that see his argument, other parts of me don't, but that's neither here or there because we're not talking about Dave Chappelle. But if you really believe in what you're doing and you think it's fine and right, it wouldn't matter what other people had to say about it. Like, yeah, it may hurt your bottom line a little and you may get some backlash for it, but there's still always going to be, usually, unless you do something uber offensive or wrong, people that will support you and stand by you and so to go hmm well people just don't like that kind of humor anymore everyone gets offended that's not really the case it's just you not standing by your art or seeing that this kind of thing isn't profitable and so instead of adapting your comedy to fit the broader audience you just kind of shrink and throw your hands up and go oh i give up like I said, I do like some of the older movies Todd Phillips has done, and I thought he did a phenomenal job with Joker, but it seems like he's a bit of a knob, <laughs> so. <laughs> the last bit of controversy we'll talk about is the Gary Glitter song that was included in the film, Rock and Roll Part 2, I believe, and it's come out that Gary Glitter was former glam rock singer in the 70s and 80s, but he was convicted pedophile and so they felt like a lot of people felt like his song should not have been included in the film. I'm kind of conflicted on this because while we should not be supporting pedophiles, there is a, such a thing as separating the art from the artist, which people do conveniently all the time for things larger in scale than others. Like people supported R. Kelly for so long despite his crimes and people still listen to his music because they still really like it despite what he's done to numerous children and young women. Um, you know, people still enjoy The Cosby Show despite what Bill Cosby's done. People still like Roman Polanski movies despite him doing various crimes. So again, it's a conflicting thing. I understand why people would be upset and we should not support pedophiles or murderers, rapists, anything of that sort. But for some people, they can just separate the art from the artist. So overall, what is the takeaway regarding Joker and the controversies surrounding it. I think that it's a film that you should see on your own and try to 
put out any kind of thing swaying you either way. I don't think it was as controversial of a film as people were trying to make it out to be. Like there were articles and reports of people walking out of theaters because it was so violent, but the violence was was pretty spaced out except for towards the end of the film where we were descending into madness fully for Joker. And I feel like while some of the controversy was merited, a lot of it wasn't. And I think it's just a film that you just need to see for yourself and decide for yourself where you stand on it. Overall, I think that it's fine that the Joker was a sympathetic villain because like I may have alluded to earlier, no one sees themselves as the villain of their own story. No one really sees themselves as the antagonist of their life. No one sees themselves as the pure bad guy in their own story. And the story of Arthur Fleck becoming the Joker is no different. I feel like the film did a really great job of addressing mental illness, classism, social services, about our neglect of not only each other, but the poor and the mentally ill. And I really enjoyed that the film didn't take really a side on if the Joker is a good person or a bad person. I really enjoyed that. If you want more of like a general overview of my thoughts on the film, please be sure to check out The Binner Recommend which I'm going to put in the description below as well as throw up an annotation for it so you can easily get to the review there. Overall, I do think it's a good movie and it's something that everyone should kind of experience on their own and make up their own mind about. So let me know what your thoughts were on The Joker. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Did you think any of the controversy surrounding the film was merited? And I guess that's it for me. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye, bye, bye.